Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian. With Iraqi Kurdistan and Catalonia recently voting for independence, I think now is a great time to discuss another infamous independence referendum. On October 30th, 1995, the people of Quebec went to the polls to vote on a referendum that would determine their future with Canada. My buddy Tristan at Step Back History did an excellent video on it covering the lead up and the aftermath, and I highly recommend you go and check it out if you want to learn more. But if you want a brief overview, French Catholics colonize Quebec, France loses a war and trades Quebec to the British for a few rocks in the Caribbean. French Catholics in Quebec don't particularly like being part of a Canada full of Protestant English speakers. And things came to a head after the sovereignist Parti Quebec came to power in Quebec in 1994, promising a referendum on sovereignty the following year. The question presented to the people of Quebec in 1995 read as follows. Do you agree that Quebec should become sovereign after having made a formal offer to Canada for a new economic and political partnership within the scope of the bill respecting the future of Quebec and of the agreement signed on June 12, 1995? If that sounds vague, well it is, but I'll get more into that later. Unfortunately, for those hoping a yes to that question will give them a mandate to try for independence, the no crowd succeeded by 1% more of the vote, dooming any hopes for a free Quebec in the near future. But what if Quebec voted yes? What would happen next? Well, to be honest, no one really knows, not even the people who wanted a yes vote. From what I can tell, neither the yes camp nor the no camp had any coherent plans on what to do if Quebec voted yes. There were widely different interpretations at the time of what the referendum question actually meant, with some thinking it simply meant more autonomy within Canada, while others stating it meant actual independence from Canada. Jacques Perizou, the premier of Quebec at the time, was a member of the later faction, planned to immediately ask for negotiations to begin with Canada about Quebec's independence. Jacques wanted negotiations to begin as soon as possible to prevent Canadian attempts to block independence, and hoped to keep those members of his own party who only wanted increased autonomy out of the talks. Presumably, Jacques' best case scenario would be for Quebec to be independent so they could pass their own laws to protect their French culture, but still keep them tied to Canada through a common currency and market. Hopefully France would recognize them immediately, which would make negotiations with Canada easier, and pave the way for Quebec's eventual membership in the United Nations, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and the North American Free Trade Agreement. Of course, that is almost certainly a pipe dream, as I will explain. If the Canadian government refused to negotiate, however, Jacques stated that he would proceed with a unilateral declaration of independence. And refusing to negotiate is likely what the Canadian government would have done. After all, Quebec makes up a quarter of Canada's population and generates billions of revenue for them. Losing them would be a disaster for the country as a whole. Thus, it's probable that the Canadian government would not recognize the results of the referendum due to the question itself being incredibly ambiguous. They may also have referred the referendum to the Supreme Court, who would probably agree with them. This would likely force Jock's hand, and he would likely make the United Declaration of Independence he threatened to do should negotiations not happen. As this crisis unfolds, then-Canadian Prime Minister Jean Chrétien would probably resign, as the people of Canada would lose confidence in his ability to lead them through this time of troubles. A cabinet of national unity made up of members from different parties and parts of Canada might also be formed to hold the country together, and they would need all the unity they could get in the months ahead. Why, you ask? Well, I've seen evidence that Saskatchewan had set up a committee to investigate their options should Quebec vote yes on the referendum, and it's probable that other provinces did the same thing. Options the committee discussed included their own secession attempt and even <gasps> joining the United States. Truly, every Canadian's worst nightmare. They may also have tried to form a union with the other Western Canadian provinces, i.e. British Columbia, Alberta, and Manitoba. This region has a large pro-secession faction due to it being more conservative than the rest of Canada and also having long-standing grievances about the government being dominated by the more populous provinces of Ontario and Quebec. If this were to happen, Western Canada may even try to wrestle Canada's northern territories, i.e. Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut, from the rump Canada. There is also the question about what would happen to the maritime provinces of New Brunswick, Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island. An independent Quebec would isolate them from the rest of Canada. Thus, even if they didn't want to, they would need to rethink their future with Canada and might consider seceding, forming a larger union amongst themselves, or joining the United States. Then again, this balkanization of Canada might not even happen if the rest of the world has anything to say about it. The fact of the matter is, the world community wouldn't look too kindly on the unilateral declaration of independence. Any nation that has to deal with a large minority population centered in one region with dreams of independence would not throw their support behind Quebec since it would only encourage their own restless minorities. Thus, they wouldn't recognize the result of the vote and would block any attempts by Quebec to join international organizations, just like how the European Union said Scotland would not be allowed to join them should they vote yes on their own independence referendum in our timelines 2014. The United States would also be unlikely to back Quebec's plan for independence. According to White House documents, then-President Bill Clinton had no plans to recognize Quebec as independent right away if the yes vote won out. In a prepared statement for a yes vote, Clinton would have stated, 
Since the Canadians have yet to work out their future constitutional arrangements, it is premature to consider the question of recognition of Quebec. Thus, Quebec can kiss an easy ride to NAFTA goodbye due to a disinterested United States. On top of that, the uncertainty created by Quebec's relation with Canada would probably cause the stock markets to take a nosedive and would only get worse if the rest of the Canadian provinces decided to go the same route as Quebec. Thus, the rest of the world would want the issue taken care of stat and would probably encourage Quebec to settle for increased autonomy rather than full independence. Another group of players who would also push for this would be the minority Anglophone, Immigrant, and Aboriginal communities. In our timeline, a majority of ethnically French voters of Quebec voted yes in the referendum, but a vast majority of those not French voted against the referendum. Thus, these groups would not be happy with the yes vote and would probably fear their rights would not be respected in an independent Quebec. Considering that in our timeline, jocks blame the no vote on the ethnic votes, their fears are likely justified. Thus, in those areas of Quebec where the no votes were in the majority, they would threaten to impede any negotiations, or even secede back into Canada if they don't get what they want. In fact, an ethnocentric Quebec that didn't care what the rest of the world thought and just pushed for independence might not be a recipe for a stable government. I'm not sure if we're going to see some sort of violent civil war break out in Canada, but I guess it is a possibility. But in my humble opinion, the most plausible scenario after a yes vote is Quebec gaining increased autonomy within Canada, but that doesn't mean history won't be changed. In fact, you would probably still see an increased interest in secession around the globe, and there may even be some successful attempts, such as the aforementioned Scottish referendum. You may even see secession movements in the United States become more mainstream. Does that mean any of these American experiments will be successful? Probably not, given the abject failure of the 1861 slavery rebellion, but who knows what impact that would have in the years to come in this timeline. That said, if you have any ideas about what a world would look like if Quebec voted yes on independence, feel free to share them in the comments. Well, that is all to say in the subject. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, share this video, or support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrich, the alternate historian. Bye!